Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason, and look to be invited to share with you reports that have been received, even today a prophecy, and that the Lord Jesus Christ will be the one who is in the midst, the one who is, receives the glory, the one who is preeminent. And the first one I have to share with you today is from Archbishop Foley Beach, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of North America. And this dear man has become a friend over recent months. And that I know that he attended the Primates Conference uh, last month at Canterbury in England. In fact, I will share a letter, not today, but uh, possibly next time, uh, that uh, I wrote in conjunction with Mrs. Margaret Brown of the uh, Third Province Movement of the Church of England. Very strong letter. And yet, though, although Foley Beach is not a primate, he was allowed to attend that conference. And he is the only one thus far who has come with a positive response. And because he came with such a positive response to me, then, yes, what he's asked me to do, I will now do in this particular program. He says, please continue to pray and intercede as we seek to proclaim the message of Jesus in North America and plant gospel-centered and gospel-proclaiming churches. That would be quite something to hear that from an archbishop or a bishop of the Church of England. Yes, this man is undoubtedly a man of God, undoubtedly one who is led by the Holy Spirit. And I shared that with him and await, await the response that uh, I emailed to him a few days ago. So, to base this prayer, you always to be positive and base the prayer on the Word of God, not the words of, of man, but the words of God, that's where, where our foundations are. Bible-based prayer. Can't go wrong when it's based on the Bible. Can't go wrong either when we know that it's the Holy Spirit who's praying through us, based on the Scriptures. St. Luke's Gospel, in chapter 24, and verse 49, and... Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Those were the words of the Lord Jesus himself to the disciples. And those who were of the company too, of the disciples. And in fact, what were there? Something like 500 who had listened to Jesus and heard Jesus, but yet on the day of Pentecost, what had happened? The Spirit came down, the Holy Spirit came down, and there were only, what, 120? What had happened to the rest? And it is in these days too that just as the Holy Spirit came down and what filled these, these dear ones like Peter and John and then jeweled, jeweled them with power from on high. In fact, I was speaking earlier this morning into my Skype into a church service in Kenya and speaking on Peter and John and the, the first 
miracle of healing after Pentecost, the healing of the, of the lame man. And it was something quite wonderful to be able to share the Word of God under the anointing and the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Although the connection was far from perfect, yet there it was that these dear, dear ones, men and women, and many children too, of the orphanage, and that beautiful singing from the children, that the Lord Jesus Christ had the preeminence there. So we'll turn to prayer here. Father, thank Thee that Thy hand is upon Archbishop Foley Beach. And I ask of Thee that he will be a man indeed endured with power and the Holy Spirit endured with the Holy Spirit and with fire that this man will not be afraid of proclaiming the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you will raise him, Lord, to be a man that you can use on a worldwide scale not just in North America, but throughout the whole Anglican Communion, and that the Anglican Communion will be realigned. Because at the moment it is so divided, and it's so away from thyself. And because it is away from thyself, because facilitators were allowed, rather than the, to into that particular meeting rather than the Holy Spirit given free course, free, free to be able to use and speak. But how can the Holy Spirit speak to ones who, who are not open, who are not filled with him? But holy, although he did not have a position of a primate, holy beach, yet I ask of thee, O Father, that he will be so used by you to what? Waken up those in Gafcon. Waken up those of, of, the, of those the Church of, of the South. And that they will be bold in the Holy Spirit to stand against that which is not Bible-based. Yes, marriage was only a symptom of the real issues. For the real issues are that there are those within that communion, not just the Episcopal Church of the United USA, but other, others too, who have turned away from thee, O God, have turned away from thy word, and have made an absolute mockery of thy word. Because they will not obey thy word. They will not take thy word as a final authority of God. And cause, O oh God, a break within that Anglican communion. That the very devil will be put to flight. And there will be a realignment. And the Holy Beach will be part of that realignment. And the man who will be mightily yours of thyself as he's prepared to hear from the Holy Spirit. And that you will grant him to the answer to all these prayer requests. That the message of Jesus will be proclaimed throughout North America. And that Gospel-centered and gospel-proclaiming churches will be planted. Planted not for the glory of man, nor for the glory of woman, but for the glory of God and the preeminence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that through the power of the name of Jesus, and through the power of the blood of Jesus, Every interference in human affairs by the very devil himself will be put to flight. 
of the glorious gospel will be made known through those Anglican ones, Anglicans within the worthy realigned communion. Let the others go to themselves and proclaim the proclaim whatever they want to proclaim, the words of man or woman, rather than the authoritative word of the holy, righteous and pure God, who is still sovereign to his own purposes in these days. To thee, O Father, is all the honour and all the glory, and as thy honour is at stake, with what has been keep the Anglican communion together. But it has not obeyed the Holy Spirit. Break it completely and utterly and bring out of it that which will be pleasing to thyself. Fulfilling thine own plan and not the plan of man. That every creature shall be reached with the gospel. Within the realigned Anglican communion. For this is asked, O Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you shall be glorified through the Son. Amen. It's always good to, to receive requests, personal requests that well affect affect the actual actual person. And this is, in fact, I'm not quite sure which country it's from. It's definitely Africa. From my my Ita Samuel Nel Newton. He says, praise King Jesus, Brian. I am so overwhelmed by the fact that God has someone we could always agree and pray together. I am writing for my UACE results. And my prayer request is that God 20 points, the maximum, and that I get a scholarship to study from UK. Thanks so much. Waiting to hear from you. And I know that, yes, God wonderfully answers. And that, although I get a number of requests, and some of them similar, I did get a response that whether it was Maita who got 19 points, two A's and a B. And that now to pray for this scholarship to study, he particularly wants to come to the UK. Not easy to get a scholarship for the UK, it seems, in these days, particularly if you're from a Commonwealth country. God is able to undertake, he's able to under overrule and enable this dear one. Father, bring before thee Maita Samuel Newton and to come and to the UK to study, to get a scholarship. Not quite sure whether it was Maita or whether it was another dear one who got the 19 points. But that doesn't matter. The fact is that he seeks to, to bring, to please thee. He seeks thyself. And I ask of thee a very simple prayer. That through the Lord Jesus Christ, and the confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that has based this scripture. Yes, what is the scripture to base this on? Galatians 4 and 19. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, that above everything else, my eater, Christ will be fully formed in him, and that he will be a light coming into Britain, because Britain is a very, very dark country in these days, turned its back in the main against the light of God. And as that this, this young man will be granted that scholarship on all to thy glory. Amen. Let's look. Let's look in what is it? Move. Move on. always come back because there's more prayers there but I think I've got more than enough uh, for today now last last week if you uh, if you've listened to um, what I brought before the Lord I prayed for a man called Ramsey who lives in Algiers in Algeria and he's come back since they shared further with him. This gives uh, an insight into what it is to be a convert from Islam, and particularly still living in the family, family home. Thank you very much for your message, my father, and also for your prayers. I am going through a difficult time, and your encouragement is very helpful. Reading the Bible and watching Christian videos in Arabic and French helps me to stay strong, and also having a good knowledge about Christianity. And I'm trying to use this knowledge to help other persons to understand the message of Jesus Christ. Peoples are becoming more and more curious about Christianity. And I'm trying also to explain to them that Trinity doesn't mean three gods, and that for Christians there is only one God and not three. In three months, we are going to make the... Last year was very difficult for me. I guess this year will be harder because my father is harassing me about not making the Islamic prayer and also for not reading the Quran. So this year, if I want to have peace, I'll have to make the Islamic prayer and read the Quran to avoid the pressure from the family and the society, of course, without leaving Christianity. I thank you for your offer about the book. Yes, I'd offered him from a dear, dear sister uh, who'd written a book, a wonderful book, to explain Christianity, to offer it free from her. But unfortunately, I'm not very good in English, so I will not be able to understand it, especially if it's about Christian faith. And I can't give you an address because I live with my parents. Thank you, my father. I'm sorry for not responding to your previous message. God bless you and protect you. St. John, chapter 20 and verse 31. Yes, it is here. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Heavenly Father, 
thank thee for the openness of Ramsey, of what it is like to be a convert from Islam to Christianity, and still live within the family home. I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill Ramsey, and that he will be brought into the glorious position of what it is to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And that he will know that he has the life of God within him. And that all the Ramadan season he will be able to be a shining light to the glorious life in God in Christ Jesus. And that even though it is far from easy in that country, grant him wonderful opportunities to share what it is to come into the liberty of the Son of God, a child of God, one who knows God as a living person, one who is brought to an understanding, not just of sins, but how to receive forgiveness of sins through repentance and through the cleansing blood of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I claim upon the life of Ramsey not just a hundredfold, but a hundred times one hundred of souls to be brought out of the darkness into the light of Jesus Christ and the light of the life, what it is to have God himself living in and through us. So that those who walk in darkness shall see a great light, the light of God himself in Jesus Christ. For this is asked and the answer received through Jesus Christ, thy beloved Son, that you shall be glorified in the Son. Amen. I seem to have, let's have a look, quite a number of papers here, all, all from my dear, dear brother in Christ. Pastor Ruben Rosale in Nepal and from his wife Sita. And he says, first of all, um, a month of miracles. How are you? We remember you in our daily prayers. And that is most encouraging to, to hear that. Today, through this email, Rev, I want to update you some miracles testimonies from our recent healing and ev evangelistic crusade we did in Somani. Noel Parasi district in 8th and 9th of February. Rev, first day, early in the morning, it was raining in one side and in other side. I received phone call from our local pastor that some radical Hindu people came and burn our banner, broke our stage bit some women 
and some local believers threatening to kill and stop crusade. Our local host, Pastor Rab Indra, called police for help to calm down mass. But when police came, radical people also fight against police too. Finally, after an hour, our local host passed a call and said that the situation is calm and they are going to change venue of the crusade. I praise God at least we would be doing crusade. We reached crusade, ground at, at 12. In the afternoon, when we reached, I saw people were hungry to hear gospel. Many sick people were brought there. Our church worship team for worshiping Lord is marvelous, true, and in spirit. My presence of Holy Spirit moving and touching. I saw Jesus moving among people, touching everyone, giving healing and set free from bondage. The first day after prayer for healing, seven people came up front with wonderful testimony God did in their life. There were numbers of people I saw speaking in tongues and filled with the Holy Spirit. Second day was also same. Many sick people were brought into crusade ground. Many people get healing from God. Some of the testimony are below for you. Rev, I trust that this testimony will grow your faith in Christ. We'll read on because there's, there's more yet. Another one. Uh, our our Mac Oanpur district coordinator, Pastor Rathna, has planted a church in Kakalai region seven months ago and has 43 chiefing tribes members and it's growing week to week. Well, that's quite something. Marvelous to hear this. And all the praise and all the honor and all the glory is to our God. And he's working to build this church this year before monsoon. Please pray God provide for the building of the church. The need is for tin plate roof. And according to Pastor Ratner, it costs 520 US dollars to complete it. Please pray. And if God, oh yes, God will, will provide. So let's now move on more on what happened with these, these miracles. This is a picture here. There's the woman standing with stick. It, in stage is Rita Gurung. Since three years she was in bed, sleeping. She was unable to stand too. She had a problem in her nerve. Today some people brought her by carrying her in chair. When missionary Christopher and we pray for healing prayers, she stood up herself and walk and come to stage without anybody's help. Her relatives were amazed seeing her stand up. She said by crying that she came in chair and now she'll go home carrying chair. Sounds like something out of Smith Wigglesworth as this. Wonderful. People coming, used to come in their wheelchairs and then take, wheel them home. Same with George Jeffries. And we have another woman in the picture, had long-term back bone pain. She did much treatment from both doctor and sacrifice, many animals, to idols and witch doctor. She was tired of doing it. Yesterday she came for the first time in our crusade and she accepted Christ. Now, oh, that's encouraging to actually say the word accepted Christ. 
That's the all-powerful word, to accept Christ, not to some of the wishy-washy stuff of today. Wishy-washy terms? No, she knew that she was a sinner in need of a saviour, and she accepted this saviour into her life. Today she came forward for healing prayer and Jesus healed her. She's now free from any pain. He testified and so that God has really healed her completely. Then there is, we need your prayers so that we could be able to reach more than what? 20,000 victims' families with the hope, love, grace and salvation of Jesus Christ. And where? Where is he saying this? I want to ask you to stand with us in our vision. Also, through this email, I want you to let me know that, that we have four healing and evangelistic crusades in February. Well, we've mentioned about one particular one, but where are they? They're in the earthquake epicenter regions. That great earthquake and this dear, dear, dear brother in Christ and those who are with him actually dare to go and take the gospel into those, those devastated areas. And that and now base this prayer. Let's see. Let's see what we have. As I, as I have more than one verses. So we'll choose, choose, yes, choose this one. St. John's Gospel, chapter 2, and verse 23. Now when he, that is Jesus, was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name, when they saw the miracles which he did. And it's the same today in these, these countries which are very much have these healing crusades. Yes, there is opposition against them. There are other religions which don't like this to take place. But the Lord is at work as he was in the days of Jesus' earthly ministry, as in the days of the early church, as in the days of down the centuries, there's always been some evidence of healing. Not just healing, but deliverance from demonic spirits. Same with within in the last century with Smith Wigglesworth and George Jeffries. Same this century with these dear ones like Pastor Reuben and others like William Rizwam in Pakistan, these dear, dear brothers. Heavenly Father, this report is, is, is so wonderful and it's a report that brings glory unto thyself through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that these dear women, given as examples of what was done, what is the greatest miracle? It is that to be born again of God, to have sins forgiven, but also that mir those miracles of healing. And these two dear women, been healed completely and as Pastor Reuben says there were others thank thee and for the uh, other crusades which are taking place or have taken place or still to play, take place in Nepal through Pastor Reuben 
this month. May there too be many, many brought to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. And many who come to, to be healed, to be healed of whatever sickness or whatever disease they may have. And any who may be demon-possessed, that the demons will be cast out, never to return again. And for that dear, dear pastor as well, looking amongst the keeping those dear tribe of people to have a church built that they can come and worship in. Yes, they want a roof over it. Nothing is too hard for thee, O Father. Nothing is beyond thee. And this intercession stands before thee on behalf of these dear, dear people that you will move upon the hearts of, of people in various parts of the world to send to that work in Nepal and that the church will be built and that more and more of that of the people in that tribe will be saved. All is asked for thy glory, O Father. All is asked through the Lord Jesus Christ, the name which is above every other name. Amen. The part very much upon upon me to last Friday when I spoke very much about Jesus in the one of the cross of Calvary, and he made an open show of the principalities and powers of darkness that they were utterly and completely defeated at Calvary through his blood. And Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12 very much tells us because we have to be we need to be aware of the of the devil's tactics because if we're not aware of them then how can we overcome them in prayer? So Ephesians 6 and verse 12 tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Unless we're aware of this, unless of the tactics of the devil, then we're in ignorance. And there's such a failure these days for those who call themselves archbishops, pope, archbishops, bishops, various hierarchy, priests, deacons, ministers, pastors, to want to speak on social affairs, political affairs, plays right in right into the hands of the devil does that. Because, unless we actually know, not just know the scriptures, but actually prepare to preach on the scriptures and teach on the scriptures, then the people who are hearing are in the ignorance of the tactics of the devil. Now this particular prophecy, I'm not saying that this is adding to the word of God, but it actually helps to understand when principalities and powers of darkness have been spoken about. Demonic spirits have been spoken about. It's a word from the Lord that came to, to David Griffiths of this ministry back a, a few months ago now. And it's called the Rings of Satan. When it comes to identifying accusers, one is always taken on a ring 
For the sake of understanding, we call these rings the rings of Satan. The attack comes from every direction from a ring, not from one individual case. Now let us look at these rings. Now on the world stage, there is a ring gathering around Western countries. Where's that being preached? about the dangers that's happening through the very devil himself blinding people ones who should know better when, when they have come into the light of Christ the knowledge of Christ it is not just one jihadist group that is threatening but several they gather around what they perceive as Western nations who have lost their way. No wonder they perceive that Western nations have lost their way because in the main Western nations, including that which calls itself Christianity, has turned its back upon God. Lost the light of God. Lost the presence of God. Now if we look at constitutions of Western countries, if you look at the moral decline, if you look at the slaughter of the innocents, in effect you can witness what is happening. What is not being noted by the Western press is the fact that death was in the title of the rock concert that was targeted. You see, what is not being noted by Western countries is that the battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Yes, very much the verse I've just read. Principalities and powers are attracted by those portraying death, and Western countries are portraying death through their slaughter of the innocents and having heavy, rotl, heavy metal rock bands attracting what devils of death by in effect glorifying death. So an attraction goes on in Western countries that have forsaken their constitutions, the devil taking his opportunity to destroy them. So what thy ministry has done is campaign not only to restore constitutions to Western countries, but also to movements that have lost their way too. Church movements that were once biblically based now allow members to have partners rather than spouses. Even abortion is understood. Praise and worship bands glorify Satan through demonic drumbeats of the devil. Note, this is not an edict against the use of drums. It is about playing them in a way akin to heavy metal music. And so, a whole universal gospel has come in that is acceptable to the God of this world. So in effect, he's taken over movements that have, been for, that have forsaken their foundations. And the devil places a ring of protection around these nations and movements, protecting them from the likes of thy ministry, who has become the conscience above it all. A nation or a movement without foundation cannot stand. And at this time of thanksgiving, that was, remember it was in November in the United States, it has been asked whether that which came in from Plymouth, England, has been upheld. If it has not, then Satan will have his way and destroy the very fabric of society picking out the remnant who are holding these traditional values. So government agencies will pick on those 
or exposing these rings of Satan. Their attack is fierce, and just as with Christ in the ring round, around him in his earthly ministry, they remove reputation and credibility, and the criminals become the righteous, and the righteous become the criminals. The case is against the righteous being based on perception and suspicions, rather than the hard evidence of the constitutions of Western nations. So what is happening to you now is based on a ring, that there is a ring of constant complaints against thy ministry. For look, there has not just been one government agency that has come to inspect thee. There are several, and the attack is constant, and this attack has drained you of your resources, looking to destroy you through letter of the law, over regulation, and it is commonly known in thy nation. Around the Apostle Paul was the same ring, the same with Peter, the same with the psalmist, and they all shouted out, Why does God allow this? Well, the opportunity is there to expose the works of the devil. Now there are those who are sitting ducks for these attacks, that is, Western nations who have forsaken their own foundations. But thou hast not forsaken the landmark which thy fathers have set. Thou art built on solid rock, and the prophets and apostles back it true one, not false ones, as there is always counterfeits manifesting from Satan's kingdom. Close of brackets. And the key is in the intercession of, of protection that thy antitesi gave to your earthly father. And as you give this out to the Christian media, you can protect the remnant from the attacks you have had to endure. For you have had to endure them, taste it and understand them. But this is now your time to make a stand. You point out the sins of Western nations and movements who have moved away from their godly callings. A repentant nation and a repentant movement is protected of the Lord. And unless Britain and America, as the nations of my compact, understand they have to cry out, the name Jesus, they shall be destroyed. If you come to Tessie's letter, which has the intercessory understanding of protection, you'll find the promises of Psalm 91. And this is my promise to the movements of my remnant. It shall not come nigh thee. You sh will see thousands falling on one side and the other, because these attacks come in the ring. There are, are not just one attack in Paris, and likewise, with thy movement in North Wales, the attacks are coming from every corner. But the difference is, you are standing on the rock whilst nations have moved to sand. So thou hast been given a worldwide trumpet call to call back to the Saviour, crucified and risen again. Now this is what you tell it was the media, actually, and for whatever reason, they would not, they would not take this up. Probably too strong for them. That those who embrace the intercessory psalm are protected by the Almighty Himself. And from this one throne comes the sword of the Spirit, the weaponry of the saints who have consoled being consumed by his fire. And it is this sword you are now lifting up against these rings of Satan. 
and you will expose the individuals and satanic movements who have been the instruments of Satan looking to destroy thee. What power over Satan thou hast, O uncompromising students of the word of God, as with Elijah, who had a ring around him, there came a time for him to face the prophets of Baal, and it is these prophets of Baal that have gathered around thee to destroy thee, for they are of a religious order. You have exposed in your defense to the police and in your defense to the office of the public guardian who missed this key exposure of Satan's rings in the name of their own secular humanist religion, the reason of man being always contrary to the reason of God. Heavenly Father, Thou art the Almighty God, who with Thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, art one God, working together, the triumphant sovereign God, who through the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary, when he was nailed to the cross and his blood was poured out, he defeated, utterly and completely defeated, the powers of Satan. And these rings of Satan, these demonic spirits that are at work in these days, May the body of Christ waken up to this and waken up that they not, do not wrestle against principalities and powers of darkness but against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and it's that spiritual wickedness and the rulers of the darkness of this world within these rings in Western nations, and in particular too, the United Kingdom and the United States of America, who've turned their backs against the Almighty God, and it's no wonder Satan is, is running amok through them, because he's had the opening, he's had the opening to work, he just uses human humans to fulfill his purpose. And in these days too, intercession has to be made. And intercessions have to be gained. Raise up, O oh Father, those who will respond to the call to be intercessors and not just intercessors in isolation, but to come together. Answer this prayer, O oh God, thy honor is at stake in these days. When Britain, the United Kingdom has to decide whether to remain within that satanic infested European Union which is ruled by these rings of Satan are to come out and obey thee the almighty God that you give the United Kingdom one last chance to decide for thee or not for thee. Raise up those who will believe thee those who will not let thee go until the throne of God has been touched. Because it's not what man or woman is going to say regarding the European Union. It is what you are going to say. And just as Intercession was made against that Nazi system during the Second World War. And the intercession was gained 
Bo Reese Howells and the Company of Intercessors of the Bible College of Wales, Swansea. It's on that scale these days that the enemy of God is in the Euro European Union and the United Kingdom has the opportunity to come out of it and turn back to the repentance, O oh God. Otherwise, you will spew them out of your mouth. Raise up those who will not let thee go. Intercede before thy throne. Because it is only intercession gained intercession like at Swansea. In those days of the Second World War. That can save the United Kingdom from being lost forevermore to Satan and these demonic spirits. Thank thee, O Father God, that it's been brought right out into the open now. And the opportunity is there to decide for God or for Baal. Just like in the days with thy servant Elijah, who is on the Lord's side, is what he said. And you answered by fire. Answer by fire in these days too. Because when the answer comes by fire, then the people will believe. They will say, the Lord, he is the God. the demonic spirits will be driven out never to return again thank thee O Father God that you have heard because this is prayer has been made intercession has been made through the name which you cannot deny on the basis of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary where he made an open show of the principalities and powers of darkness.